very contract. Uh, obviously, as a minister, I carry collective responsibility for all the actions of the government. And when it comes to agreeing contracts, these are agreed at portfolio level. And of course, that's clear from the material we published yesterday that in this case that was undertaken within the transport portfolio. Why did they run but, past well, you then? Well, well if I'll, I'll, I'll give you a complete answer, um, Glenn. Obviously, as Finance Secretary at the time, I'm responsible for providing the budget for the meeting of any contracts. And what officials were doing were, was, was, was briefing me that there was no need to change the budget arrangements based on the contract that had been agreed and approved by the transport portfolio, and which, of course, is confirmed by the email trail that you got yesterday. So you gave it the nod? Well, what I gave was the budget approval, which I'd given in August, and the budget approval I gave in August of 2015 uh, the officials assured me on the 9th of August, uh, 9th of October, did not need to be changed. Did you so, know CMAL were against? Well, what I knew was that the budget arrangements that I'd put in place in August, which was my locus on the issue because I was responsible for financial management, did not need to change as a consequence of the arrangements that were put in place. But, but, crucially, given, but, crucially, but, but crucially, crucially, on the um, the submission of the 8th of October, that was a submission that was not copied to me. So I did not see that submission. That was properly dealt with at contractual level within the transport portfolio. But the assurance that officials wanted to give me was that given the agreement the transport minister had put in place, there was no need to revisit the budget arrangements, which I had previously agreed in August. Why didn't you step in and stop the Scottish Government slipping on the most enormous of banana skins? Well, the issue that I was faced with was the question of what is the budget for this proposal? And I'd been asked about that in August, and I'd given my agreement to the budget proposals that had been put in front of me at that stage. And in October, I was essentially being briefed that the contract had been approved and there was no change to the, to the budget that was required. And that's the, the crucial role of the finance sector. The finance sector doesn't approve all contracts. If that was the state, the, the, the arrangement, then you know, there would be significant inefficiency in the processing of contracts within government. Did nothing what about the, this worry the, you? Though? Well, what the finance... Well, what, what didn't worry me was the fact that I was being told that the financial arrangements I'd put in place in August were still the same required financial arrangements. So from my perspective, as Finance Secretary, managing the budget as I did for nine years, I was, uh, I was given the assurance I required that no additional financial support was required. Do you feel any sense of personal responsibility? Well, I started my comments in response to Glenn a second ago saying, as a minister, I take collective responsibility for all of the decisions of government, those that I take, those that are taken by other ministers, because I stand uh, honouring my commitment to collective responsibility. Within collective responsibility, I will have more responsibility for certain matters than others. As Finance Secretary, I was ultimately responsible for the spending of public money and the balancing of the budget, which I exercised. But on other issues, ministers would take decisions and I would provide the finance. Will you make a statement to Parliament to clear this up? I, I, don't, well, I don't think there's anything that needs to be cleared up or anything that needs to be added to what the First Minister said quite clearly. Um, the, the documents we published yesterday confirm exactly what's been told to Parliament for weeks and weeks and weeks that the decision to approve the contract was taken by the, by the, by the, the Transport Minister. Um, that was confirmed in the email trail you, you got yesterday. Um, so there's no detail that's different to anything that Parliament has had shared with it over the course of the last few months uh, and years, in fact. Could you have withdrawn financial approval? Well, I had no basis for so Could doing. Could you have done it? Do you have the power of veto over that decision? Well, I'd, I'd, given the, uh, I'd given the approval for the finance that enabled people to then proceed with the procurement. If the procurement was then to be stopped because financial provisions had been put in place, that would have exposed the government to significant risk because in good faith, tenderers had engaged in a procurement process. We had a preferred bidder by that point. So legal and financial risk would have been imposed upon the government had financial agreement at a late well, stage you been withdrawn. No, but, 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 well, you I, I, withdrawn I just, but I've just answered your question, Tom, that if I had done that, that so would have... Done it. No, I'm answering your question. That would expose the government to legal and financial risk because we had embarked on a procurement process in good faith, as had 
if my memory says me right, five tendering organisations, and that essentially it, it started that process email, that was underway. The email chain certainly reads as if, had you raised a significant objection, the, it would not have proceeded to award the contract to CMR. There at least been a pause to satisfy you that all was well with it. But the issue that and I... Your final nod was required in some sense. No. Uh, the issue that had to, I had to be given assurance about, and which the Director of Financial Management thought I should be given assurance about, was that the contractual arrangements were still within the budget envelope that I had approved in August. And that's crucial, because I am out at that time, the Finance Secretary today will be doing exactly the same thing, approving a whole range of different budget provisions that ministers have to live within to enable us to balance the books, which, as you will recall from all your scrutiny of all these issues, it has been a central part of the competent record of this government over the last 15 years. Okay. Did you so, speak to the First Minister before giving it the final nod? It, well, let me correct your question, Rachel. I didn't give it the final nod. Um, I was given assurance that the budget provision that I had put in place in August was adequate uh, for the contractual arrangements, and that was something that the First Minister would expect me to deal on my own behalf. Okay. Could I just clarify?